Okay, so um, let's do the very similar mechanism, same mechanism, Birch reduction me mechanism, except this time we've got an electron withdrawing group present on our benzene ring instead of electron donating. Now, it's a very similar explanation, but opposite as the other one, right? Because the electron donating group didn't, the electron didn't want to be placed on that carbon. But since we have an electron withdrawing group, right, you can imagine that this carbon's electron density is being pulled away, you know? So that electron will want to be donated to that carbon in particular, okay? So that's why we get this re different reduction pattern, you know, where the substituent is concerned, okay? So um, I'm not going to go through the whole explanation of everything. We'll just do with the sodium, just like we did last time, okay? So uh, sodium, remember, is itself a radical. Okay. So uh, what's going to happen, right? If you remember where you're going, it makes this a lot easier. Okay. So uh, we're going to have the electron want to go to that carbon because of the positive charge developing. So again, we can think of it doing like this kind of covalent ionic thing. Honestly, I think it's the easiest way for undergraduates to think about it as opposed to a single electron transfer. Okay. I've seen things like people trying to make sodium nucleophilic, you know, that's very not not a very correct way of thinking because you gotta think of where the nucleophilic atoms lie on the periodic table and sodium does not lie anywhere near those, okay? It's really the sodium is just throwing that electron on there. But, you know, we can't show that very well in a mechanism, okay? So again, we'll just do that. And then, remember, we're going to make the double bond there. And then that electron goes there. We also have to remember that we've got that hydrogen atom there, okay? Here, we've only got that one substituent. So unlike the other one, we don't have to remember to put a, that extra hydrogen out. So when that happens, just follow our bonds. So we've gone from S, sp2 to sp3 there. Like that. This bond didn't do anything, so we keep it the same. This bond here, well, this bond was broken, and it, this bond was formed. Right? So you see that was broken, that one was formed. This one's broken, that was there. We've got that hydrogen there, and we've got the radical there. Okay? So just follow your bonds, and everything should work out. Now we've got the solvent, of course, deprotonation, if you like, put your hydrogen there, that helps you out. Gonna add another sodium atom, donating its electron. Again, you might see this as a SET, single electron transfer. But I don't mind if you do it this way. Okay. Here, let's so we don't get. I'm just gonna not show that hydrogen anymore. Just so you guys can get used to going back and forth. Like that. And then deprotonation of the salt. And then 
that's going to give me. My final product. Remember, we're going to have sodium methoxide too in this. Any questions on that one? Fairly similar to the last one. Okay, if you need more explanation, you can look at the last one. The one thing that's different, remember, is that this electron is going to go to this carbon because of that positive developing charge, right? Um, and the other one would go away from that carbon because that's kind of a negative sign. 